Today, I'm gonna cook with a blast from the past. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Pan here. You may not even know who George Foreman is. If you were born in the 2000s, not in the 1900s like I was, this guy was a heavyweight boxer and he was famous in the 90s for selling a ton of these electric cooktop George Foreman grills. You can make burgers, steaks, paninis right on the counter of your own home. And man, they were super popular. It made George Foreman very, very rich. And I didn't even know these things still existed, but I thought, man, I want to make a panini. I want to grill and finish off a steak. Maybe I want to throw a little ground chuck on this guy or maybe even make a burger at home without sending grease and smoke everywhere. So I thought, why not give it a try? Let's unbox it and try it out. So as I mentioned, the George Foreman grill was everywhere. You could get them on infomercials. I guess the infomercial is kind of dead because people aren't watching TV. Certainly not at 3 a.m. like I used to do, but the George Foreman grill is still around and here it is. Now, what's interesting about it is it kind of looks pretty big here. You can see my hands on it. You know, size wise, it's about the same size as the side of a toaster, but it's not as thick. In fact, what they say is you can store it standing up just like this, right? So we get a user manual here, grill and panini press. So if you're looking for a panini press, you can certainly get this instead. Now, be honest, the George Foreman grill despite the fact that they're probably still paying him some royalties or something, is actually one of the cheapest presses I could find out there. Now, I will say the construction seems, you know, pretty basic, like the top here. I don't know if that's plastic, but it certainly feels like it. I know you can get these in kind of stainless steel. We have a two prong outlet right here, you know, pretty long cord, George Foreman, looks like we get a red and a green LED light. And what I wanna show you here is that we get this little drip tray. And so that will just slide in here. You can see we have a couple of little openings and then tabs right here, so it'll slide in there. It's just kind of held in by a little bit of friction. So meant to be easily removed so that you can clean this out and catch anything that runs off the front here. But we have little rubber feet down here, right there. And then we have this flip up panel in the back. So that's going to raise up the back so that this angles down so that anything that comes off of the burger, the meat, the sandwich, whatever you're grilling is going to kind of run down these channels and then get caught in the drip tray right there, right? So you can see that it'll roll over this edge and then right in there. And then we have, you know, the metal cooktop surface here with these raised grill lines, right? Top and bottom. And it kind of seals pretty well, but we have this really big, floating hinge right there. So if you put like a grilled cheese sandwich in there, you'll still get these flat, but if you have something really thin, it'll squeeze down on it. So you can see that it's not like a piano hinge. It's kind of this hinge inside of this slot right there, right? So pretty cool. All right, just about to cook here, but I do want to show you here that this flip out arm is actually a switch. So when you flip it out like this, it's assuming, I think that things are going to be hotter. So if you're cooking a steak or something that needs to be really hot, you flip that out and it's going to let everything drip down. But if you push this down, what I think this does is when you push this down is it's the lower temp kind of flatter surface, but not as hot. So that is actually pretty clever. It's not just an arm, it's actually a switch as well. All right, now what we gotta do here is go ahead and cook something. So let's try it out. All right, even though I think you can actually cook a steak completely on the George Foreman grill, I'm actually going to sous vide them here first, and then I will put them on the grill to kind of finish them up in serum and then cook through. So I'm actually gonna sous vide these a little bit less than I normally would to get them to full edibility here, and then I'm going to actually cook them probably for like, I don't know, five, six, seven minutes on the George Foreman grill, and we will see how they come out. All right, have the grill here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and plug this in because I wanna show you the red light, green light. Red light means stop, green light means go. Might be a little hard to see there. The red light is on, which means that it is warming up and is not ready to use. So you wanna wait till this light turns green and then is ready to cook with. Now, I will also show you that I have the leg kicked out here because I'm gonna do steaks, and so it's slanted, and it's gonna be at that higher steak cooking temperature. So let's go ahead and take the steaks that I sous aid and finish them on the George Foreman grill and see if they are edible. All right, green light is on. It only took a few minutes for it to get to temp there, and here are my sous vide steaks, and I'm gonna go ahead and just put these on. You can see the drip trays in there, so make sure you have that. Oh, I can feel the heat coming off there. And now let's just go ahead and see what we can do here. So get this one off on this side. Put this one on this side next to it. So let's not forget, 
think these are edible as is, but I really like a little bit more of a crust on the outside and kind of the contrasting texture. So, you can hear it sizzling, man. Seriously cooking it pretty hot. No temperature control. It's kind of a simple, basic cooking device. I guess they say we're smarter than you, so let us figure it out. So, like I said, I'm going to leave it on there. I like the idea that it's cooking on both sides. You don't have to flip it. I'm going to give it a few minutes, and then we will try it out. All right, FYI, I do see some grease dripping there, but obviously pretty lean steak, so not a lot, and it hasn't even gotten to the drip tray yet, but I definitely like that. You can see it has some channels on both sides, so it won't spread out at the bottom. It's kind of channeling it in to that tray there, so we will probably have stuff in that tray, which is going to make cleanup nice and easy, but... As of right now, it's doing its job. All right, it's actually been five minutes since I put these on here. So I think just to turn it off, all I do is unplug it, which is what I'm gonna do. And now I am just gonna go ahead and lift up the front here. I don't wanna get burned, but this is not hot right here at least, which is nice, but ooh, got some steam coming off there. I'm not sure if I left them on there too long or not long enough, but we will see. I can tell you right now, I've got some of those grill lines there that shows the authenticity that they came off of a grill itself. And that is looking pretty good and grill lines on the bottom as well there. So I'm going to pull off both of these and we'll cut into them and see what I think. You know, really should be edible either way, but does it give me that finish like I had grilled these on the grill because that's what you miss when you sous vide stuff. You miss that char and that bark on it. So let's cut it open, see how we did. All right, let's see what we got here. I'm gonna cut into the bigger one here and just see if I've got dinner tonight or cat food. And look at this, medium rare. That's how I set my sous vide. And so actually putting it on the George Foreman doesn't really seem to cook through it, which is exactly what I like. now. If I did more than five minutes, you would probably expect it to cook more, but I didn't. And that was the whole point, just to kind of finish the outside. So let's try it. Oh man, that is a ticket. I tell you what, I also bought some steak seasoning to put on the outside there and whoo, it's got a little fire to it, but mm, that is just the way I like it. So this is the bigger one and I would expect the smaller one to be even, even more perfect, but whoo, I got dinner. Nice little hack. Didn't smoke up the house, get stuff all over. The cleanup is gonna be easy. And this thing is pretty inexpensive, under 30 bucks, I think, to add a George Foreman grill to your house. So if you wanna make paninis, steaks, sandwiches, what have you, well, I think you might wanna pick one up too. I'll put a link to it in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out. We can discover more and explore so much deeper.